In its strongest criticism yet of its ally, the U.S. says Israel may have breached international law in Gaza whilst using American weapons. The U.S. has said that Israel may have violated international humanitarian law. In the summary of a report delivered to Congress, it was said that the finding of reasonable evidence to conclude that Israel had breached international law protecting civilians in the way it conducted its war against Hamas. This is the strongest criticism made towards Israel from the U.S. yet. Meanwhile, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin says the U.S. wants to see Israel move the civilians away from the battlefield. While Biden recently said he won't be supplying offensive weapons, which Israel can use to launch an all-out assault on Rafah, the city which 110,000 people have fled as the access to aid remains inaccessible, food and fuel supplies are growing critically low, according to a UN official. As Eurovision fans gear up for the final in Sweden this weekend, a dark cloud hangs over the contest. Thousands of pro-Palestinian protesters, including climate activist Greta Thunberg, are taking to the capital and calling for the removal of the Israeli finalist Eden Golem. We're all here for one reason and one reason only, and uh, the EBU is taking all safety precautions uh, to make this a safe and uh, a united place for everyone. But pro-Israel supporters have also turned out in droves campaigning for Golan, including Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. A day before the final, a ship filled with humanitarian aid for Gaza prepares to depart. The vessel aims to raise awareness for the deaths of over 35,000 Palestinians killed. When Russia invaded Ukraine in 2022, um, Russia was excluded from the Eurovision without any protests and almost immediately. We expect the same treatment for Israel in this regard. The 10 acts moving into this weekend's final are Latvia, Austria, the Netherlands, Norway, Israel, Greece, Estonia, Switzerland, Georgia and Armenia. Many pro-Palestinian protests are scheduled to coincide with this Saturday final as the Israel-Hamas war grinds into its seventh month. Putin reappointed a low-profile technocrat as Russian Prime Minister in one of his first moves post-inauguration. In line with Russian law, Mikhail Mishustin submitted his cabinet's resignation on Tuesday when Putin was inaugurated to his fifth presidential term. He had already been the Russian Prime Minister for the last four years. Most cabinet members are expected to keep their jobs following Putin's inauguration. However, the fate of Defence Minister Sergei Shoigu remains uncertain. One of Shoigu's top associates was arrested last month on bribery charges. That man's arrest was widely interpreted as an attack on Shoigu and a possible precursor to his dismissal despite close personal ties with Putin. Having this experience of the right-wing government in Poland after eight years, I feel that the most important thing would be to press politicians onto the transparency of the citizen rights on the right to privacy, which is breaked by the big tech companies, by the government. We should have a right to know what is happening in the shadow with our freedoms, with our rights. If I'm elected as a member of the European Parliament, then I will work very hard for the European Parliament to be a democratic watchdog, because we see that there are many big challenges facing us. The European Union is responding, is growing stronger, is growing more powerful, and that's why we also need to become a democratic giant. Democracy is really on top of the agenda, uh, and I will continue to work for it.